Hey what up squad it's your boy Kflow and this video is just a quick build update on the four wheel camper. Let's get this thing started. For those of you guys who are new to this channel, I have a 2009 Toyota Tacoma TRD Sport. Fully locked with ARB air lockers for both the front and rear diffs and I also have it re-geared for 488 gears. Now this channel is designed to give you guys the best DIY Toyota Tacoma tutorials as well as other creative ideas that you could probably implement in your build. Additionally, I do have a four wheel camper shell that I have installed on the back of my truck and I like this setup because I can easily remove it by myself. And this camper I've been building for the past several months and this is just a seven month update on that build. Now I do have a lot of lessons learned guys and hopefully you could take something from it when it comes to building out your truck for overlanding or for whatever have you that you're trying to build. And I'd like to also hear your thoughts. Let me know if you have any creative ideas because I love hearing creative ideas and also implementing it to any of the designs that I have put together in this truck. This is video number three of the four wheel camper series. So if you haven't checked out those first two videos, make sure you check them out. And now let's get to the truck. All right guys, so let's start here at the back of the truck. So you'll probably notice from my last video, I did move the diesel tank from this side, which was mounted on this 8020 aluminum extrusions. And then I moved it over to this side just to keep the refueling on one side of the truck. So every time I did have to refuel the diesel heater and the fuel tank, it was pretty annoying because I had to spin the truck around to do one side and then do the other side. So this time I did mount the diesel tank directly to the frame of the truck using through bolts and nuts. So this keeps the profile a lot lower too. So this aluminum extrusion I can now use as a mounting point for my new 10 pound propane tank. I'll no longer use the little green tanks for camping and I'll just use the big propane tank which is easier to refill. So moving on to the passenger side of the camper guys. This is a window that I did convert to a hatch instead. That window is pretty useless. And I used compression latches here and these are locking compression latches. So let's open her up. So the idea behind here guys is to have an indoor and outdoor kitchen setup. If it's really nice outside, nothing better than cooking outside. If it's too cold and too rainy, it's definitely best to keep indoors and have a more comfortable space to prepare the meals. Right now this space is currently empty. I took all of my kitchen stuff out because I still got a little bit of electrical work and plumbing work to get through before I design any type of shelving and lay out the kitchen gear and all the utensils and such. I did finally get the water pump plumbed and this thing works great. I have a temporary switch over there for now which I'll, I'll be moving elsewhere and I'm going to do like a whole control system for the water and I'll get more to the control system when that's implemented. But for now this is a regular switch. You get water pressure into the hose. Oh yeah so Definitely nice to have an internal pump that gets water pressure like that. It's awesome guys, especially for outdoor showers and or washing dishes. And you don't have to worry about like pumping up a pressurized tank in order to get water out of it. So definitely a beautiful thing. So the plumbing is pretty much 95% done I want to say. But I have a few thoughts. I might do like a water diversion system so I can put some hot water through that water system. So you can also take hot showers, but I'll figure that out design-wise a little bit later. So as good of an idea as this hatch was, guys, I did run into some issues. And for those of you guys who didn't see the video before this, this is basically plywood and I used fiberglass resin to coat it and make it waterproof. And one of my mistakes was I actually cut this slot for the compression latches after 
I put the fiberglass resin on, which basically made the cutouts not waterproof. And uh, those cutouts end up getting water in them. So as you can see guys, the fiberglass resin started rippling here and wrinkling because it, it pretty much absorbed water underneath. And you can tell that water actually seeped through these compression latch holes. And as you can see guys from the shot, I did put sealant around this even after I installed it and I thought that was going to be enough. But unfortunately, these compression latches are oriented actually the other way. So this compression latch actually has a built-in water dam. So if rain water comes down, it drips down and then gets fed outwards away from the latch. But since I installed it upside down, all the water just end up following this curve and seeping into the camper and there's no water dam on the upper section of this compression latch. So I will be redoing this whole hatch system, guys. And I just had a few other thoughts too. I'm taking into account some of the comments that Diego made regarding a table system or at least like a drop-down system for anything inside the kitchen. So I'm kind of implementing that. So with this hatch, Instead of having it open upwards, I'm gonna have it open downwards. And with the hatch opening downwards, these compression latches will be in the proper orientation. And I can also have this double as a workbench. So it will open down, and then there's going to be another fold down that I could implement to be basically like a kitchen countertop where I can place all my cooking stuff, and maybe even implement some type of integrated stove top or a little cooktop on the corner here. So with moving the hinges guys from the top to the bottom, I will have some holes here at the upper frame. But I'm actually going to take an idea from one of you guys, which is JVP. He left me an idea, which is basically use like a C channel to divert some of the water. So that C channel will also be used pretty much cover those holes. So. Thank you guys for all your thoughts and comments. All right guys, so now let's deploy this awning. And this time we'll do it real time so that you guys can see it deployed in actuality, how long it really takes me. Cause I did also make some improvements to make this thing go a little bit faster. So that was definitely faster guys. Now I'll show you what I did. So here I did add some D-rings to make the hook points much easier to get to. So there's a D-ring right there on the driver's side, closer to the rear of the camper. And I also have a D-ring right there more towards the front of the camper. So with the D-ring mounted onto the camper guys, I can still use the awning even if the camper is just on jack sands. And that's awesome, that's great. Almost makes it like a little cabin. 
Now let's get into the back of the truck. I'm not gonna pop up the top yet, and you'll see why. So I recently made and installed this locking dresser system. So let's open it up and you guys can see. So these dressers have a cutout on the side. So anytime you're outside the camper, you can actually still access all your stuff in these drawers. So the idea would be when I'm packing up the truck for a longer ro uh, road trip or whatever, I can just load my clothes and stuff in here without having to pop up the top each time. So this has definitely been great. And I'll get into more details once we get inside. So now let's pop up the top. Now I am not a professional woodworker guys, but for my first dresser build, I thought this came out pretty damn good. I had designed this in SolidWorks first to make sure it's feasible and that everything fits properly. So just like the kitchen guys, this is basically an indoor outdoor dresser system so that we can access our clothes when my girlfriend and I go camping from both inside the camper and outside the camper. And these are long drawers too. This is about I believe, 27 inches from the front to the back. So there's plenty of storage space in here. Getting into the more fine details of this dresser system, guys, is these locks are actually window sash locks. And what I end up doing, recommendation by my girlfriend, is to 3D print some grommets. And I used white Pedgy to 3D print matching grommets. So now it's very contemporary design. I'm no interior designer, but I, I thought it looks pretty damn good. This dresser also does have two USB ports that I can use to charge my phone and my girlfriend's phone while we're sleeping. And I also have a 12 volt slot for an inverter and another USB charger if need be for charging our tablets or whatever else right in the camper. So these two are connected to the internal electrical system of the camper so it's pretty much integrated with the rest of the system. Now having this dresser will definitely keep things a lot more organized because we initially had just duffel bags and our clothes would end up scattered like everywhere in the camper so having this dedicated clothes storage will keep the camper much cleaner much neater. So now let's go towards the front of the camper guys. I'll go through this real quick for those of you who are new. These are four cushions that go on top of this slider portion of the bed which allows this to be basically like a king size bed underneath this bench is 100 amp hour battery and a 16 gallon water tank I go into the technical details in the previous update video so make sure you check that out now moving towards the passenger side of the camper guys this is the indoor kitchen portion nice big counter space and this is finally plumbed in terms of the water outlet the drain is still actually just draining right into the space so I actually haven't been using this drain I'm using this collapsible camp sink to catch all the water coming out of this and just dumping it outside as needed I will be working on the plumbing figured I'll have this thing drain right down to that corner and outside the camper and I'm also going to put like a hose to divert all the water away from the site maybe 10-15 feet away from the truck itself so let's go turn this on real quick so you guys can see and also I do have a secondary fuse box there which I'll mount some lights and all that other fun stuff and this is the switch And here's the demo. It's definitely great having an internal sink for like brushing our teeth or washing our faces real quick after waking up. Definitely glamping to the max, guys. In my previous video, I had the fridge mounted here on the floor 
and I actually ended up just taking it off of the camper completely. I'm going to pretty much do a rear seat delete, my version of it, and since I have that slider from set power, I'll just put the fridge on the slider at the passenger side of the rear of the cabin of the truck. And that rear seat delete is actually from one of you guys. Thank you, Matt Broder. I know you had mentioned in one of my previous video to use like a 60% or even a 100% rear seat delete made by Goose Gear. And I figured I have some woodworking tools. I'll give that a shot. So you guys will probably see that in a future video. And Diego, I know you did mention this too, to put the fridge on a slider system so it can slide in and out of the camper. But unfortunately, this height is actually way too short for both of my fridges. Even my short fridge doesn't fit in here. So it's unfortunate, but that was also another great idea. So moving to the future ideas, guys. Right now, this diesel heater is pumping hot air right in this direction here. And unfortunately, if we had boots and other shoes and stuff here, those items will be the one that take most of the heat and the front of the camper where we sleep end up being pretty much cold. So I'm going to design a 90 degree heat diverter so that all the hot air will get pushed upwards and circulate a little bit better throughout the camper. And moving at the opposite side of the heater is this little inset. Currently, there's big space there and I'm thinking I'm going to use that as shoe storage. Not sure yet, but that's uh, one of the future ideas that I have. Now the overall idea of this build, guys, is to keep everything modular. I have the camper set up for long duration camping. If I wanted to camp over three days to a week or so, I have everything in the camper. And I can also easily remove that camper by myself, just in case I wanted to use the truck to haul dirt, move furniture, and things like that where I don't want the full weight of a camper and also need a full bed to store stuff on. Now I will be pausing the build for a while because I, I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about the overall build of the camper so far and if you have any other creative ideas you think I should implement, please leave it in the comment section below. I love hearing your thoughts and I also want to give a quick shout out to Diego Martinez Matt Fubroder and JVP for all your creative inputs into this channel and into this build. So that's all I got for this video guys. Make sure you smash that like, subscribe, and hit that bell to while you're at it. And again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Till next time, peace out everybody.